remember when we pass through each fiery trial why god will be with us through that last weary mile people will say looks like god's done it again nothing was burned but their bands cause there was shadrach That's not part of my plan. Something strange has happened and I don't understand. They're loosed and they're walking. Won't you tell me if you can? Why nothing was burned but their bands. They're loosed and they're walking. Won't you tell me if you can? Why nothing was burned but their bands. not part of my plan something strange has happened and i don't understand they're loose and they're walking won't you tell me if you can why nothing was burned but their bands they're loose and they're walking won't you tell me if you can why nothing was burned but their bands It's time to start our service with prayer this evening. Let's continue to pray for Brother Bowen. Remember Brother Eddie, their sister Audrey, Sister Angela, and Sister Garen. Uh, let's pray for Brother Zach and Sister Tina. Remember uh, Brother Branson, Sister Andrea. Uh, remember Sister Judy Lucas. Uh, pray for the backsides that we lost from our church. And uh, continue to pray for Robert Hogan, my cousin, and pray the Lord touch him. And Sister Ball said, remember, uh, Mary, uh, the Lord uh, helped her through her surgery, and she's recovered. Oh, all right, all right. All right, she has a surgery Friday, and pray the Lord to help her through that. Uh, does anybody else have any spoken requests? Brother Charlie. Charlie. Remember, uh, Brother Martin and Sister Frieda Cox. Uh, I thank you, Brother. I won't say your name, but I'm pretty sure uh, Barbara, she got surgery for her son. She's in there. All right. Friday, she got some duty ready, but let's pretty sure make it really simple. Any other spoken requests? All right. Uh, Sister Garen? All right. There's no others that stand. Uh, Sister Ashley is going to come help be anointed.
Praise God. I'm glad prayer works, aren't you? It's amazing all these requests we get in this week. And the testimonies about God's answer to this prayer. We just thank you for it. Right. Well, we thank God for all the witnessing cards that we have in the vestibule they've been anointed I got the one that had the anointing oil on it so if you need to we can anoint some more for you uh, and remember the youth sign up sheet youth lunch sign up sheet we're going to try to get that this upcoming month but that beach trip does sound nice if, I, I think we'll get more people signed up for it if we can get a beach trip out of it but uh, just remember those it's going to be back in God's house again this evening and on Mount Carmel Elijah said that the God that answered by fire, let him be God. Uh, and then a few hours later, after he'd won that victory, he turned around and ran from Jezebel. Well, the Lord answered us by fire here a few hours ago. But let's not run from the enemy, but let's run towards God again here this evening. Uh, I believe he can do great things every time we come around this altar. He's here to uh, touch and minister to us. But uh, let's worship in spirit and truth this evening. And Sister Shelton comes and bring the congregation. All right, get everybody to stand with us. Stand with us if you can. I have found out that if you talk to him, he makes everything all right, doesn't he? Let's sing about that. Just a little talk with Jesus.
The talk with Jesus is what will make it right. You can try on your own and just make things worse, but when you get that answer to prayer, everything's going to be exactly the way God wants it. This time we're going to see our offering for ushers to come. Brother Albright, will you help? Brother Albright, yes, Lord, bless time of giving. faithfulness and giving. This time I'm going to ask Sister Shelton, Sister Bray, and Sister Mama will come minister in song. try her song. What a beautiful day for the Lord to come again.
God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If today was that day, Sister Granny would know it a split second before any of us. We'd be right in behind her. Uh, this time it's her turn to start passing, Brother Sheldon. Praise the Lord. Give God a hand of praise tonight. Aren't you glad that we have promised we have? What a beautiful day for the Lord to come again. Any day now, that day is going to be reality to the church. Jesus is going to come again. We're going to tell this old world goodbye with all this sickness and sorrow and sin and sadness of this life. We're exposed to things that we deal with here. We're going to leave all that behind. What a beautiful day that's going to be. Amen. I'm glad. You know, those saints who've gone on, I miss them. I know you do as well, but I'm happy for them. I'm happy they finished their race here. And I'm glad they're in heaven. They're celebrating. And uh, they're just waiting for us to arrive. One day, by the grace of God, we're going to get there. God's going to help us if we'll follow him and walk with him. We're going to make it to heaven. And I tell you, what a time that's going to be. Can you give him a hand of love and appreciation tonight? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Man, I love the Lord, don't you? We need the Lord every hour. I tell the Lord daily, every hour of every day, I need you, Lord. We need Jesus. We need him to help us. And I'm glad that he will. Men at their very best are men. Men can make promises and they mean well and have every intention of following through. But things in life can change suddenly. It cause men not to be able to do what they say they're going to do. But God is always faithful. He never changes. You can anchor your life, and if you'll anchor your life in Him, you'll make it through the stormy seas that come this way and at this life, and you'll cross over into heaven one day. What a time it's going to be over there. Amen. We want to get in the Word of God tonight. Enjoy all the singing. Always love our singing here. And uh, there's some more of you hiding out there on the pews that can sing, and we're going to find you. We're going to get you up here singing, and uh, you can do it by the grace of God. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 tonight. Let's stand, please. Good to have all of you in God's house. Those watching online, thank you. We appreciate you. I want to say thank you to Sister Garen. I love her. I told you here recently, she and I have been churching together a lot of years now. And uh, we were both younger when we started. Amen. She, doesn't, she looks exactly the same. Only the Lord knows how that happened. She looks exactly the same as when I first met her. I looked in the mirror one day recently. And I said, who are you, sir? Excuse me. You ever do that? Where'd you come from? I didn't recognize you. But I love her. She brings me. She takes care of me. Has all these years. You don't know it because she's quiet. But she takes care of me, and she brings me stuff for my vitamin C to help keep me healthy. She watches out for me. Anybody messes with me. She'll get unsanctified on you just for a moment and hurt you. And then pray God to help, help heal you <laughs> from that. I love her. Give her a hand. She's a sweet lady. I love her so much. She's a good lady. Amen. 1 Corinthians 15, begin reading in verse 20 tonight. Let's pray. Father, thank you again for the joy, and it is a joy. I was glad when they said unto me, let's go to the house of the Lord. We're glad to be in church tonight. Thank you for all those that are able to come out tonight. We thank you, Lord, for those that are able to watch online this service this evening. And we pray your blessings here again now, God. Thank you for what you've done this morning. Thank you for baptizing this young man with the Holy Ghost and fire today. Thank you for saving his soul, changing his life, God. The change that you make in our lives when you come in, when we let you come in. Thank you for what you're doing. I pray, God, you'll help me for a little while now. Need your touch, as always. Can't preach without you. Need the preacher to show up tonight. I pray your word will be effective, God. It will touch everyone in this house. Those watching online right now, those who may watch at a later date, draw us to the elders tonight. Everything done. Let it be for your glory and your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. The Bible said, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, begin reading in verse 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead 
and become the first fruits of them that slept, the first fruits of those that have died. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Then cometh the end when he shall be delivered up, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Death is going to die. Death has an appointment with death. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Can you shout amen tonight? Lord God have mercy. Last enemy. My God. Hallelujah. The last enemy shall be destroyed is death. It's going to come a day that Ridge Funeral Home is going to be put out of business. It's going to come a day that Pew is going to have to lock their doors because that last enemy is going to be destroyed. I want to preach to you tonight on that thought, our last enemy. Our last enemy. The number of deaths have touched our congregation this past year. I told you this morning, I get emotional about this at times when I think about them. I'm happy they've gone on to heaven. I'm glad your mother's over there. I'm glad for the other family members here, those that have gone on from this church. I'm, I'm thankful that they're not having to fight anymore. I'm glad they're in a better place. But we still feel the hurt and pain of that. I told you I talked to a good pastor friend of mine this morning from down east, and he told me, he said, please remember us. We're dealing with a lot of death down here. It's that place from church to church. People are leaving this world. People that we've known and loved for years are no longer here because they've been claimed and carried off by the enemy called death. Their departure from this world, it leaves us sad. It leaves us grief-stricken. As we watch the people that we know and the people that we love taken from us one by one, <clears throat> the knowledge that we're soon going to follow after them and the death uh, can bring fear to us, the living. It can bring confusion to us as the living, those left behind. None of us want to die. I remember going to visit a man one time years ago and you know, he was very sick and didn't have much time left. And he told me, I'll never forget what he said to me. He said, you know, I want to go to heaven, but just not right now. It wasn't that he feared going to heaven, but he didn't want to die. And I don't know of anybody jumping up and down that would say, I want to be first in line when it comes time to die. None of us want to leave our family here. We don't want to go by that grave, but we know that we will if the Lord tarries his coming long enough. The Bible's very clear on this matter. In Hebrews 9 and 27, the Bible said, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, and after this the judgment. Since death is stalking every one of us. My grandfather used to say, I can hear him say it right now from the pulpit. He said, Death and the devil is on my trail. He said, Death will catch me one day, but the devil never will. Death is stalking every one of us even right now. Since that is the case, since death is after us, uh, we need all to have a biblical understanding of death uh, and that that's, this last enemy will be defeated. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the Apostle Paul here is dealing with the resurrection. He describes the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and what his resurrection means for the people of God. 
Uh, the Apostle Paul talks about how Jesus is going to reign over an everlasting kingdom. In this kingdom age, uh, Jesus will subdue all the enemies of God. Jesus will subdue all the enemies of righteousness. All earthly kingdoms and all earthly rulers, all earthly powers, all the enemies of God, in that day they're going to be conquered, they're going to be defeated, and they're going to be done away with forever. I'm telling you, my friend, that even right now, there are powers uh, that have set itself intentionally uh, against God Almighty. There were powers on this earth uh, inspired by Satan uh, that think that they can overthrow God himself. But there is coming a day uh, when all of these powers will be defeated. Uh, they will be forever done away with. Uh, they will be conquered by the King of kings uh, and the Lord of lords. Can you say amen? Verse 26 here in our scripture says that the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. The question uh, is raised here tonight. Uh, how did death come to be in our world? How did an enemy so terrible uh, and an enemy so hurtful, how did it ever come to be unleashed uh, upon mankind? Well, we know that death had a birthday. Death had a genesis. Uh, Death had a beginning. Death had a dome. The Bible said in verse 21, as we read to you tonight, for since man came death. We know the Bible teaches us that death came into the world through that first man, Adam. Death did not ex exist until Adam and Eve sinned against God in that Garden of Eden. Did you know that God created them as perfect beings? Uh, they were created to live forever. They were never going to die. Uh, but the moment that they sinned against God, the moment they ate of that forbidden fruit uh, from that forbidden tree, uh, they died. We know they didn't die physically at that moment. Uh, matter of fact, their physical deaths uh, wouldn't take place until many centuries later. Uh, but the instant they disobeyed God, uh, at the instant they ate of that fruit of the tree, uh, God said of every tree in this garden, uh, you can eat of it except that one. Uh, the moment they disobeyed God and sinned against God, uh, they died spiritually. Uh, the Bible said they were driven from the Garden of Eden uh, away from the presence of God. They become separated from God because they were now sinners. Isaiah 59 and 2 says this, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. You listen to me. I'm not trying to be a smart aleck. I, I want to make this loud, this point loud and clear. You can pray all you want, but if you are a sinner, God does not hear you. God turns his and hides his face from you. The only prayer that God responds to in the prayer of a sinner is that of repentance. And the moment you as a sinner repent of your sins, I tell you, God will move and God will hear you uh, and God will save you to the other most. I've said it over and over. It gets on my last nerve. It causes me to have spiritual indignation when I hear people say, people that I know that are sinners, uh, people that live in sin. Somebody said, well, you know, we're not supposed to judge. Uh, you don't have to judge people. You just wait. Uh, that tree will bear the fruit of what it really is. People that don't love God, don't live for God, don't go to church, don't pray, uh, don't live holy lives, uh, they're sinners. Uh, but yet when they get in trouble, uh, they ask everybody to pray for them or they'll, they'll say, I'm praying for you. I can tell you in that situation, uh, it's all right to say, I'm thinking of you. It's all right to say, I hope you feel better. Uh, it's all right to say, I'm pulling for you. But if you're a sinner, uh, don't say, I'm praying for you because your prayers are going nowhere. God does not hear those prayers. If you want to get your prayers through, get on your knees in an altar, repent of your sin, pray that the Lord will come into your heart, and then when you pray, Jesus will hear you, and God will respond to those prayers. Somebody say amen. So if you're a sinner, stop saying I'll be praying for you. Because you're not doing them any good. You can think about them, pull for them, root for them, 
but don't pray for them because that's not going to help them or you because God will not respond to a sinner's prayer. The Bible shows us that when sin entered into the world, death followed on the heels of sin. Since Adam sinned in that Garden of Eden, since he disobeyed God, since God forced him out of that garden, death uh, has claimed billions of human lives. Uh, and the toll grows larger with every passing second uh, of every day. Already today, it's 5.30 right now. Countless numbers of people have already breathed their last breath uh, and have gone into eternity uh, even this very day. Every, eight, every second, 1.8 people died. That is 108 deaths per minute. That is 6,480 deaths per hour. That is 155,520 deaths per day. That is 56,764,800 deaths each year. Now I'm telling you, every one of those deaths, regardless of, regardless of what it was caused by, whether it was COVID, whether it was cancer, whether it was heart disease, whether it was diabetes, they, they say they just died of natural causes. Every death occurs because Adam chose sin over God. Adam sinned against God in that Garden of Eden. Romans 5 and 12 says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, uh, for that all have sin. I'm telling you that death uh, is in this world today because of sin. And since we're all born into sin, David said that we were shapen in iniquity. And our mother in sin uh, did conceive us. Uh, because everyone that comes through that birth canal, we are born in sin, born under that curse. Uh, we are all subject to the curse of sin, uh, which is death. Because Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden, uh, we all have an appointment, uh, a time when we're going to face death. Uh, we're going to breathe our last breath. This is why our loved ones and our friends must die. This is why you and I must die someday. Death is the horrible price of sin. Can you say amen? The Bible said in Romans 6 and 23, for the wages of sin is death. You know, today people never see the horror of sin uh, until it's too late in their lives. Uh, sin always brings forth death. Now, our scriptures here that I've read to you tonight, uh, our, our text calls death an enemy. The Bible said the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. I'm telling you that when Jesus died on that cross, when Jesus walked that Via Dolorosa, carrying that rugged cross on his back, and when they hung him there uh, on that hill there at Calvary, that place of, called Golgotha, the place of the score, when they crucified him on that cross, and <clears throat> sin and Satan uh, were defeated. Uh, they still linger in this world right now. We still fight the devil every day. Uh, we still live in a world that's, that's bound up in sin. Uh, I'm telling you, when Jesus died on that cross, uh, amen, uh, they're is sealed. Amen. They've got an appointment where God's going to deal with them. Because Jesus died on the cross, the devil has been conquered. Sin has been conquered forever. When Jesus comes, Lord God have mercy. When King Jesus comes back to this earth again, he's going to remove sin from this world and he's going to banish it forever. You listen to me tonight, child of God. There are people around this world that hate holiness. There are people in our churches that hate holiness. Amen. There's some Pentecostal Church of God preachers that hate holiness today. But in that day when Jesus comes to rule and reign on this earth. I tell you friend everything's going to be holy in that day. Everything will be holding us unto the Lord. Somebody ought to shout Amen. I'm telling you there's going to come a day when Jesus Christ will rule and reign in righteousness and holiness will prevail upon this earth. Hallelujah to God. So fight it all you want. 
you cannot stop the holiness of the Lord Jesus Christ. When he comes, he's going to remove the sin from this world. And when he returns, he's going to capture Satan. Satan's going to be cast alive into that lake of fire after that millennial reign. And he's going to be tormented forever and forever. And Revelation 20 and 10 says, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and forever. I'm telling you, friend, uh, that old devil that aggravates you, uh, that old devil we preached about this morning that's after our children, uh, that old devil that tries to harass people, tries his best uh, to breathe out threatenings against the church, uh, tries to shut the church down. Uh, that old devil that rides, tries to ride the back of the saints of God, uh, there's going to come a day uh, that just one angel uh, going to bind him with a chain, uh, going to cast him into that bottomless pit. Uh, and for a thousand years, uh, we're going to shout, we're going to glorify God. Uh, it'll be holding us all over this land. Uh, after that thousand years, uh, he's going to be loose for a season uh, and then the Lord of glory uh, going to cast him alive into the lake of fire uh, with that false prophet and the beast uh, and they'll be there forever and forever uh, in that torment uh, but you and I as the children of God as the saints of God uh, we will rule and reign forever uh, and forever uh, with our King and our Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah to God that's why I can preach up here with authority that the best is yet to come for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. That old devil, devil's going to have his mouth shut up for the last time. Can you say amen? When those enemies are put away forever, only one enemy is going to remain. The last enemy's name is death, according to the Bible. But death has an appointment with death. Death is going to die. Hallelujah. When Jesus died on that cross, he defeated sin. He defeated Satan. And when Jesus arose three days later and he walked out of that grave, he also conquered and defeated death. Can you say amen? When Jesus died on that cross, amen, he took the keys to the devil's own house. He walked out of that grave and he said, I'm he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I'm alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and of hell. The devil don't have the keys to his own house any longer. I'm telling you, friend, when Jesus arose on that third day, on that resurrection morning, if time stands here in just a couple months, we're going to celebrate that resurrection on Easter Sunday. Let me tell you something, friend. We don't have to wait till that Sunday morning to celebrate he's risen. He's alive. He's alive inside of you. He's living on the inside of me. And when he walked out of that grave, death had to turn loose of him, and he forever and forever defeated death. And he said, because I live, ye shall live also. Somebody give him praise tonight. <laughs> Brother and Sister Ball, I love them so much. I don't know if you folks know how much I love you in this church. If I, could, if I had arms long enough. When I was growing up, we used to have those. There was a show called, uh, was it Plastic Man, Stretchy Man? What was his name? Stretch Armstrong. I don't. I'm, that may have been him. But you could stretch his arms out in the cartoon. And I, I thought if I had them kind of arms, I'd just wrap every one of you up and just squeeze you till you couldn't breathe good. I'd have to be careful about you ladies, but I'd get you in the middle and just surround you with me and my husband and, you know, all that and just be real careful there. But I love this church. I love all of you. We were talking about before the service, they got aches and pains, and you got aches and pains. And the older you get, just, you know, you just might as well smile and say, come on in because, you know, I, I've been waiting on you. They're here. 
That's what happens. We were talking about before the service that going to come a day, going to drop all this away. All the aches and all the pains are going to be gone. You have aches and pains in your heart. Things you, things you go to bed with, things you wake up with, uh, things that follow you daily. Uh, but there's going to come a day, my friend, all oh, this going to fall away. All uh, oh, this going to drop off. Uh, the Lord's going to come. Uh, Jesus has conquered death. Uh, I said Jesus has conquered death. Uh, he's the first fruit. Uh, he's already made the way. Uh, and because you and I are his, uh, we belong to him. Uh, we are victorious. Uh, did you realize death is coming for all of us? Uh, but the Lord Jesus Christ I believe this when it comes our time to die when it comes our time to walk through that, that dark valley I tell you I believe he'll take the stinger out of death he'll be there with us he'll help us through that time he's victorious and because of his victory you and I are victorious through him hallelujah to God death has an appointment with death. Death is going to die. When Jesus arose on that third day. He also not only defeated sin and Satan, but he defeated death. Our resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. From, the, from that dead, it promises freedom from death to all of those who believe in him. I told you this morning what that means in the Greek, to believe it means more than just saying, I believe he died. I believe he rose again. But it also means to obey him, to serve him, to live for him. The Bible said in verse 22 that we've read to you, for as in Adam all died. When Adam sinned, we were all born in that curse of sin. But he said, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. All of those who are in Jesus, those who are born again, those who are serving him, living for him, we're going to live forever. I said we're going to live forever with the Lord of glory. John 5 and 25, 4 say it, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. I tell you, we've got a reason to rejoice. We've got a reason to celebrate. We may go by that grave, but we've got the promise of everlasting life in Jesus Christ. He paid the price. He died on that cross. He rose again that you and I might live forever and forever with him. Can you say amen? Anybody? Anybody believe the years are moving on pretty fast? Oh, great God. I told Sister Shelton last night, I believe it was, I said, do you realize in 12 years, well, Getting ready to be 11 years for me, I can retire. That don't even seem possible. 11 years and I can retire. Now, I ain't planning on retiring. I'm planning on being refired and just keep on plowing. I, you know, hope I can pass it till I die, till I get old, turn, I turn to old men and die. The Lord Terry's just coming. But I said, that's how. I said, what happened to all these years? Where'd all these years go? How are they going by so fast? I mean, they, they told me growing up, younger, when you get older, they go by quicker as you get older. Well, I'll tell you, whoever told me that, the people that told me that, they told the absolute truth. The days move by so quickly. Every one of us are heading toward that appointment. When we face this last enemy and we die, the flesh in us, that part of us that originated here on the earth is going to die. Our flesh, our body is going back to the earth from where it came. It's going to the grave. Oh, but our spirit man, that, that part of us which originated in heaven, when we were born again, he's never going to die. That spirit inside of us will live on in eternity. Even though these bodies die and are placed in the ground, amen, a part of us, that part created in us when we were saved, when the Lord came in and awakened our spirit man, amen, that spirit man's going to live on in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul said, 
in 2 Corinthians 5 and 8, we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Let me encourage you here tonight. Our loved ones who've died in Jesus, their bodies are in that grave right now. We were there by the graveside. You stood there. You watched the casket being laid in that ground, the dirt being thrown over that casket. Let me tell you, according to the word of God, they're not there. I said they are not there, but they're with the Lord right now. They're rejoicing. They're shouting. They're praising God. They're magnifying the Lord. That body goes back to the grave, but that spirit part of us is going to be with the Lord the moment you breathe your last breath. Let me tell you something, child of God. You don't have to fear this last enemy. I said you don't have to be afraid to die, but when you close your eyes in death, you will open your eyes up over yonder in the by and by, and we'll be with the Lord King Jesus. Somebody give him praise in this house tonight. <laughs> Woo! Ah, my, 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 my. Sister Taylor's over there dancing around like she ain't never danced before. Sister Jane's over there running. She couldn't walk for a long time. I tell you, she's not just walking now. She's running right now. Granny's little legs could sit, in that, sit on that pew and her feet couldn't touch the floor. They'd dangle. I tell you, my friend, those little legs, are, they, they, they're moving quickly right now. I said they're shouting. They're running all over glory land. Sister Blanche, your husband's over there praising God. I tell you, friend, when we go by that grave, if the Lord comes before we go by that grave, either way, we're going to have a celebration over yonder. We're going to have a homecoming over there. And we're going to be with our loved ones. And we're going to be with the Lord forever and forever. Somebody say amen. Our loved ones who died in Jesus. I, I don't, you know, you may, I ain't nothing against you. I ain't trying to be ugly to you or pick on you. You may go by that grave where that marker is and stay and do all those things. That's all right. My grandfather died in, in 2000, June the 30th, 2000. And the only time I've seen his grave marker is the day that they put him in the ground there, his body. And when we had Granny's funeral and did that graveside there with her, I saw his marker again. I don't go up there and sit and talk to him because he's not there. If you do that, need to do that, that's all right. I ain't trying to make you feel like anything different. I'm just telling you, I know he's not there. I know that's just his body. You go put flowers out there, all those, nothing wrong with that. I ain't trying to make you feel guilty about that. I'm just telling you, I know that body is there, but they're not there. They are with God. They're in the presence of the Lord. I say this, I guess, nearly every funeral for a Christian, they would not want to come back to this world for any anything. They might have loved you so much when they were here, but they are where they want to be. They're where they fought, where they run, they pressed to get in over yonder, and they wouldn't want to come back to this old sin-cursed world for anything. But I tell you, friend, they're waiting on us. I said they're waiting on us over there, and when we arrive, my, what a time in Zion is going to be in that day. <laughs> Can you see, man? There's going to come a day. It's a, it's a painful thing to lay that loved one in the grave. It's not easy to watch them breathe their last breath. It's not easy to go through that funeral. It's not easy to, in a sense, say goodbye for right now. That's a painful thing. That leaves marks in your heart. Is that right? That leaves scars in you. That leaves places in you that no matter how much time passes, you still, you still miss them. You still love them with a, with a, a deep love. Your family member. I, I know God helps with that. I know God, as time goes by, I know it gets easier to bear. I understand all that. But you have that deep love for them. And you miss them. You miss them daily. You miss those loved ones. I don't care if it's been 30 years. You still miss that loved one that's going on to be with the Lord. But the Bible tells us there's going to come a day when the Lord's going to come again. <laughs> and when He does, He's going to raise His people out of the graves. 
I said the dead in Christ are going to be risen again. Amen. Just as those souls, those spirits are delivered from death. The moment they believed on Jesus, the moment they were saved, they were delivered from death. But in that day, their bodies are going to be delivered from the grave when he raises them up again. And I told you last Sunday, I think it was last Sunday night, you know the good thing about having people in my congregation that can't remember no better than me. I can say something last week. I, I can't remember if I said it or not, and you can't either. That's why Brother Mike Willer and I have such a great relationship. We can talk to each other in confidence because the next conversation we have, we can't remember anything we said before. Amen. Amen. Their bodies are going to be delivered from the grave. Amen. When that happens, no matter where that body lies, Sister, Sister Chastity, no matter what happened to that body, I told you last Sunday, I believe it was, correct me if I'm wrong, I, those bodies can be blown to pieces in war. They can be utterly destroyed in a plane crash. They can be burnt beyond recognition in a house fire. Amen. But the Lord's going to bring all that back together. He's going to bring every particle of that body back together. I enjoyed this a good last Sunday. You just humor me here. I'm going to read it again. Wallace Sibley said, If I die and the worm eats me, and a bird eats the worm, and a hawk eats the bird, and an eagle eagle eats the hawk and the hawk flies to yonder mountain and dies when the trumpet of God sounds the eagle will give up the hawk and the hawk will give up the bird and the bird will give up the worm and the worm will give me up I'm just telling you in that day the Lord of glory is going to bring that spirit and that soul he's going to bring it back to that body it's going to be glorified and the dead in Christ shall rise first. They're going to get up out of that grave in a brand new body and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Somebody give him praise in the, this house for the promises of his word. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. Amen. The Lord's going to bring them up out of that grave. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 and 52, Paul said, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. That means we shall not all die, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. The day that Jesus returns for his people, death will be destroyed. All these who are in Jesus are going to be delivered from the grip of death. They're going to be reunited with their new glorified bodies. And we're going to all, as children of God, be taken to heaven to be and live with the Lord forever and forever. <laughs> Who sings that song, What a Day That Shall Be When My Jesus I Shall See? Do y'all sing that? When That's right, he's not here. I hope the rapture didn't place, take place and all y'all missed it. <clears throat> you remember I told you about the pastor? What used in his brain before he spoke? Always try to think before you speak. He said some of you talking to this congregation, he said some of you going to play around, some of you going to mess around with God, you're going to mess around miss that rapture, you're going to be at my house crying on my shoulder. That means he missed it too. <laughs> you know, say amen. What a day that shall be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, and he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. <laughs> what a day, glorious day that shall be. Can you raise your hands? Sister Albright, come on. Won't you get ready to sing that, play, please? Don't you love that sweet little lady right there? You ought to love her. She has to put up with him every week. No, he, <laughs> he, he's a pretty good man, too. I think we'll hang on to him. What a day that's going to be when we see Jesus. Dad will get up out of that grave. In closing, 
the Thessalonian church <clears throat> believed when the Apostle Paul talked to them in that day. They believed that their departed loved ones were gone forever. <clears throat> they believed those that had died before that rapture took place, they believed that they had missed the resurrection from the dead. <clears throat> they thought it was too late. They were in despair over the thought of their loved ones being trapped in that grave forever. And the Apostle Paul, in an effort to encourage them, we need encouraging today. These are, <clears throat> I don't want to sound like the news, but these are unprecedented times. That sounds like the news, don't it? Unprecedented times. These are days hard to bear. These are challenging times. There's things going on here that I've had, had people tell me, <clears throat> older people, older than I am, much older than I am, said, I've never seen a day in my life like this, times like we're living in now. Some of them live through different, different things, wars and things like that. They said, I've never seen anything like what we're dealing with right now. We need to be encouraged. We need to be, at times, we have to do it, encourage ourselves, David did. There's times we have to encourage ourselves through prayer, through praise. Times we have to encourage ourselves through the Spirit of God. But we need to encourage one another. <clears throat> we need to encourage one another. I need to know that you're praying for me daily. You need to know I'm praying for you daily. <clears throat> prayer changes things, don't it, Sister Blanche? Prayer makes a difference. Your loved ones that are lost, quick, keep praying for them. They may get meaner, they may get uglier, they may get deeper in sin, but keep praying for them. God can get a hold of them. Paul here, in an effort to encourage the church at Thessalonica, they thought their loved ones who had died were trapped in the grave. It was not going to get out of that grave. But Paul wrote these wonderful words that we, we love in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13 through 17. He said, but I would not have you to be ignorant. Stand, please. I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. Concerning them which are asleep, those that have died, that ye sorrow not. Don't let this thing, don't let this thing take everything from you. Don't let that, that passing of a loved one, don't let it steal your joy from you. Don't let it cloud your walk with God. I have an aunt. <clears throat> My grandmother just passed away and I have an aunt who's a backslider. She's backslid. She needs Jesus desperately. And she's, she's all to pieces. She can't function. She's, she's medicating herself. Medicine, trying to just survive day to day. Somebody told me that they said that she said this day she don't get out of bed. She just lays in the bed all day long. She's depressed. And I thought, you know, I've watched Christians who've gone through these things that don't do those things. They don't have to do that. Because the Lord gives us a comforter. The Holy Ghost is a comforter. You don't have to do that. You don't have to just lay down and just die yourself. The Holy Ghost will give you comfort to take you through whatever you go through. The Bible said, God said, I'll not put more on you than what you can bear. I'll make a way of escape for you. You compare the sinner, how they deal with death, and the Christian. And I tell you, it's a whole different world because God's there to comfort that Christian. God's there to help that Christian get through that, that difficult time. And that's just not a one-time one thing. The Lord walks with them daily, helping them, comforting them day after day after day to cope with that pain, that heartache. The Apostle Paul said <clears throat> that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe <clears throat> that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. This was not just something a man came up with to make people feel better. <clears throat> this is the word of God. That we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. I like what Brother Albright said on Wednesday night. 
He said, we're not looking for a sign. We're listening for a sound. We're not looking for more prophetic signs to tell us Jesus is coming. All the prophecies have been fulfilled. We're, look, we're listening for the sound of a trumpet. We're listening for a shout from heaven. And we're looking for that day when Jesus is going to rapture his bride, his church, out of this old world. One day, our last enemy, death, is going to be defeated forever. And the saints of God are going to have eternity to spend there together with the Lord. And then he said in verse 18, he said, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. I want to encourage you tonight, uh, just as the Apostle Paul, play softly please, uh, <clears throat> those, your loved ones, that's died in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I tell you, that grave is not the end. That death is not the end. Uh, we say, we don't say goodbye, but we're going to see you in just a little while. We're going to be there together one day soon uh, and very soon. Uh, so keep running the race. Uh, keep praying. Keep fasting. Uh, keep living holy lives. Uh, you say, well, people look at me funny. People talk about me. Uh, they're going to talk about you either way, ever how you live. Uh, so if they're going to talk about you, uh, let them talk about the way you live for Jesus. Uh, let them call you a fanatic. Uh, let them call you a holy roller. Uh, let them call you too conservative. Uh, but when the power of God sounds that trumpet, uh, let them call us gone uh, out of this old world. Uh, death has been defeated by the power of God Almighty. Hallelujah. Raise your hands and give him praise tonight. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Jesus has conquered death. That last enemy is coming for all of us, but there will come a day. There will come a day when the Lord comes again. But death has been defeated for us. And we will be with the Lord of glory. I tell you, if I don't get you excited about serving the Lord, <clears throat> there's something wrong with you. You're excited. Know that heaven's awaiting us. I want to say this very gently, <clears throat> gently as I can. With all the, <clears throat> with all the promises we have in this word, with all the hope that we've been given by the Lord, we ought not to be people, sorrowful people. We ought not to be gloom and doom people. We ought to not be down all the time. <clears throat> I know there's valleys. So I'm not saying there's not. But with all the hope and the promises we have in that book, we ought to have the joy of the Lord about our lives. We have a hope in us. We have a hope in us that death has been defeated. <clears throat> you can believe how you want, but I believe God's going to take the sting around death for the Christian. I don't know what kind of death I'm going to die, what kind of death you're going to die. I may die in my sleep. I may have to fight cancer. I may have heart, heart attack. I don't know what's going to happen to me if the Lord tarries. But I'm not afraid of that because I know when that time comes, and I face that last enemy. I know the Lord's going to be there with me. I know the Holy Ghost is going to comfort me. <laughs> this old physical body, I, I've been there at that bedside when this old physical body fought fighting to live. That saint of God, you, you knew you could see the Lord there with them to help usher them over right into eternity. And the Lord's going to do that for every one of us. He's going to be there when our time comes. If He tarries long enough, when our time comes, I believe He's going to take the stinger out of death. And I believe that we have victory over the grave. Thanks be to God, which give us, us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Will you come tonight around these altars if you're able to? We want to give Him praise tonight. There is you don't have to be afraid of dying. If you die in Christ, when no let's come and seek Him tonight. Let's worship no Him. 
Let's worship him for the hope that we have. Let's give him thanks. Let's pray for our lost loved ones. Let's pray for the backsliders. Let's give him praise and glory for the hope that we have in Christ. Let's praise him for the promises of his word to us. Father, we are thankful tonight. We're thankful for your amazing grace. We're thankful for your saving grace. We thank you, Lord, that when that time comes, we face this last We've been given victory over death. And we're going to live forever. We have everlasting life, eternal life with you. We thank you for those who have finished their course. We've had several this past year and down through the years. Good saints of God that's gone on to be with you. We miss them, Lord, but we are grateful for where they are, that they finished their race. They've been welcomed home. I pray, Lord, for each and every one in this house tonight that when that time, that appointment comes for us, that we have the assurance you're going to be there with us. You said that even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we don't have to fear any evil. For you'll be with us. Your rod and your staff shall comfort us. We pray for those dear saints of God going on their deathbeds now. We pray for those who are sick, those who are dying now, Lord. We pray for their families, God. Pray for that pastor friend of mine, Lord. This church has dealt with so much death this last, this last while, this last season. Words from a heartbroken pastor, God. That you touch that church and comfort that pastor, comfort that congregation. Comfort this congregation tonight, dear Lord. Comfort congregations across the land where loved ones have died in Christ. They've gone on to be with the Lord. Yeah. 